Hello and welcome to this tutorial on managing database lifecycles through automation capabilities of Apex SQL Tools and Apex SQL DevOps Toolkit Web Dashboard, a standalone web-based continuous integration and continuous delivery solution. For the initial step of baselining, it is necessary to link the newly created development database to a source control system and commit all objects of the current database in their scripted version to a hosted repository. For that purpose, the Apex SQL Source Control Tool in add-in for SQL Server Management Studio should be used. It is strongly recommended to use this tool as it will create the correct folder structure in a repository which is necessary for the Apex SQL DevOps Toolkit to be able to use it as a viable data source for continuous integration part of a database lifecycle. There are two possible scenarios in this situation. One is that there is already a SQL code of some previous database version located in a repository and needs to be updated to the latest version. And the second scenario is where there is yet no code in a repository. We will consider a more likely scenario for this tutorial where previous database lifecycle iteration is present and there is old database code in the repository. But in both cases, linking procedure would be the same. Code versioning best practices indicate that the version should be branched with every database lifecycle. The following shows a branching procedure for the GitHub repository host. Go to the Branch drop-down dialog, enter a new branch name, and click on the Create Branch from Master. We can now proceed with the database linking. To link a database to a source control repository, simply right-click on the development database in the Object Explorer and choose the Link Database to Source Control option from the Context menu and the Configuration window will show up. For the first configuration step, choose the connection type that will be used. In this example, repository is the Git Type Source Control System. The next step is to choose a development model, if it is going to be dedicated or shared model. The shared model allows concurrency, which means that multiple developers can work on a single database, but object locking per developer will be possible. Assuming that different developers will work on entirely different database schemas, it would be safe to choose the dedicated model. Object filtering specifies the scope of objects which will be considered for upload to a repository, since this is still a baselining procedure's default settings, which considers all objects should be chosen. Further on, the Script Options tab provides which object attributes will be ignored during comparison with a code in a repository. This means since there is an existing object in the target repository, and when compared with the corresponding object in the source database, it would be possible to ignore some differences between them and the code for this object will be presented as equal. Whether the target repository is empty or contains code for some previous database version, to ensure proper baselining, all attributes should be considered for comparison and committed to the target repository. Only the replication triggers and the system objects ignore options can be considered checked, as those usually do not migrate easily and are not necessary for the regular database lifecycle. In the end, the connection parameters to the source control system should be provided. This is where a proper branch should be selected based on the situation in the repository. This means that if the new branch was created based on an old database version, this branch should be selected, which is the case in this example. After a successful connection, the Action Center will appear with all source database objects selected to be synchronized with the repository. It is necessary to review the list of objects and check the direction of synchronization. In this case, there are objects in a repository that are missing in the development database. The Action column will display synchronization direction for that item from right to left. This direction can be changed by clicking on the direction arrow as baselining with the latest version should be established. The same applies when the objects exist on both sides but are different. When everything previous is set, the remaining operations are right in the commit comment, click apply, and wait for synchronization to complete. If the baselining is considered complete, it is possible to verify this by using a dedicated compare pipeline in Web Dashboard. This pipeline should be consistent of a series of compare steps. The compare steps has the purpose of comparing data sources and notify if there are discrepancies between them.
The steps should be configured to use the production database as one data source and development staging QA databases and source control repository as second data source per compare step. This involves the creation of such data sources in the data sources section so they can be consumed by the compare step. The creation of these data sources, with the exception of the development database, will be required in any case because those are essential and will be used for continuous integration and continuous delivery phase of this database lifecycle. When all necessary compare steps are placed and configured in this pipeline, the pipeline execution will return success status in case no discrepancies between data sources were found. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit apexsql.com.